Welcome to Worship with Patchwork Central. This is the first time that we're trying to do this on Facebook Live, live on the internet. So this is very much an experiment, and please forgive us for any missteps, uh, and bear with us if we have any difficulties, like the match is not working just now to light candles. So we're going to go through our basic patchwork worship, but it's going to obviously be modified and shortened a bit uh, for being online. But we hope that it's still something to draw us together as a community and give everyone a sense of worshipfulness and a sense of uplift uh, and a sense of togetherness. So please uh, try to come into it with that spirit and hopefully we'll all get something like that out of it. So welcome to virtual worship at Patchwork. And one of the things that we at Patchwork do to draw ourselves together into community is to say our names. And my name is John, and you can say your names at home. You can also enter your name in the comments section so that uh, when we go back and look at this, we can see everyone who is here and see that you've said your names and brought yourself into community together, even if it's in an online way. So your names. The next thing that we usually do in our patchwork worship is to share celebrations, birthdays, anniversaries, days of celebration like that. I looked at the calendar here in the patchwork kitchen and we did not have anybody listed as having a birthday or anniversary this week. So we won't uh, be singing happy birthday on this session. But if you have a birthday or anniversary coming up this week that we missed, we didn't have it on the calendar, please again, go ahead and put that in the comments section below and let people know so that we can wish you happy birthday, happy anniversary, or other happy day of celebration. So go ahead and do that now. So for this evening, I chose a reading from the Psalms, and it, this, this is Psalm 77, which is one of my favorite Psalms, um, and I'll talk a little bit about it after I do the reading. Psalm 77, I cry aloud to God, aloud to God, that God may hear me. In the day of my trouble, I seek the Lord. In the night, my hand is stretched out without wearying. My soul refuses to be comforted. I think of God and I moan. I meditate and my spirit faints. You keep my eyelids from closing. I am so troubled that I cannot speak. I consider the days of old and remember the years of long ago. My music, my spirit searches. I meditate and search my spirit. Will the Lord spurn forever and never again be favorable? Has God's steadfast love ceased forever? Are God's promises at an end for all time? Has God forgotten to be gracious? Has God in anger shut up compassion. And I say, it is my grief that the right hand of the Most High has changed. I will call to mind the deeds of the Lord. I will remember your wonders of old. I will meditate on all your work and muse on your mighty deeds. Your way, O God, is holy. What God is so great as our God? You are the God who works wonders you have displayed your might among the peoples. With your strong arm, you redeemed your people, the descendants of Jacob and Joseph. When the waters saw you, O God, when the waters saw you, they were afraid, and the very deep trembled. The clouds poured out water, the skies thundered, your arrows flashed on every side. The crash of your thunder was in the whirlwind. Your lightnings lit up the world, the earth trembled and shook. Your way was through the sea, your path through the mighty waters, yet your footprints were unseen. You led your people like a flock by the hand of Moses and Aaron. May God bless the reading and hearing of this word. I just wanted to share that reading of Psalm 77 with you because in this time of great anxiety and for many of us great loneliness 
and fear and darkness. I want to say that Scripture gives us resources, that it is not some candy coating over top of uh, the real pain of life, that Scripture gives us blues. And I don't just mean blues music with a particular chord progression, I mean art that has a blues sensibility to it, a sensibility that does not sugarcoat life that does not try to ignore or diminish all of the pain and the anxiety and the loneliness and the grief that we might be feeling right now. But what it does do is that it takes all of that darkness and it makes something beautiful out of it. It says darkness, pain, life. You can throw all this stuff at us, but you're not going to win because we can still create art, we can still create beauty, and if all we have is bits of broken darkness to create beauty with, we'll do it. And so that is what I wanted to share with you from that psalm reading. So when you're at home self-quarantining or social distancing or however you are staying safe in this pandemic, I know that you're feeling lonely, I know that you're feeling anxious. I know that you're feeling afraid. You can take those feelings and make art out of them, write poetry, put a brush to a canvas, make some music, whatever it is that you do. Transform it, make it beautiful. And I think that's one of the ways that we will survive this. I know it's one of the ways that many people are already surviving it. People are putting up so much beautiful art online to share with the world, not just for other, other people, but for themselves, because that expression is what keeps us sane. The second thing I wanted to do with this psalm tonight is there was a lot of talk in the psalm about meditating, about meditating <clears throat> in our hearts and in our spirits. And so another way to kind of deal with the stresses of this new uh, whatever this is, pandemic response, um, I thought I would teach just some basic meditative techniques, and many of you may already know these. Um, I'm going to go through them a little more quickly than I would otherwise, but you can go back and watch the video again uh, and just kind of note the steps and note uh, what I'm trying to, to convey, uh, and then just keep practicing. Uh, and even if you're just doing it for, you know, five minutes a day, uh, that has been shown, research has shown that that can be still extremely helpful in reducing anxiety and stress uh, to practice meditation even a few minutes a day. And the more you can build up, the more uh, benefit you'll get from it. <clears throat> so to start out, uh, there's, you know, there's no real magic to meditation. Just find a comfortable position, uh, sit in your chair, feet flat on the floor, arms resting on the armrests or in your lap. Uh, don't put your, don't have your neck in an uncomfortable position. Uh, if you want to tilt your head forward slightly, that's fine. Or keep it uh, facing straight ahead in a neutral position, that's also fine. And just start breathing and breathe very slowly. Uh, often people say in through the nose, out through the mouth. I know some people have a little more difficulty with uh, nose breathing or a little more with mouth breathing. Whatever works for you. Just slowly in, kind of feel like your lungs and your abdomen are a balloon fill up the balloon slowly and then when you let it out just let the air tumble out of your mouth don't try to blow it out you know don't try to blow a candle out or anything just let the air tumble out of your mouth and just let the breathing go slowly It often helps to close your eyes in order to maintain your focus. And what I want you to do is just focus on the sensation of breathing in and breathing out. Feel the air coming in through your nasal passages or your mouth. Feel it traveling down into your lungs. Feel your chest and your abdomen expand. Feel it push down on, even down on your hips. You should be feeling your breath all the way in your hips. And just focus on that sensation. 
And don't let any other thoughts intrude on the meditation. Just focus on the sensation of breathing. Now, as you're focusing on your breath, as you're focusing on the inhale and the exhale, as you're doing this very slowly, there will be intrusive thoughts. I'll just be honest with you. There are going to be things that pop into your head, and that's normal. That's natural. That's part of why we're doing this. So when you get an intrusive thought, something that you're thinking about with a person that you had an interaction with or a situation that is constantly on your mind, making you anxious. There are lots of ways to deal with intrusive thoughts in meditation, uh, but one thing to do is don't try to force them out. Don't try to push the thought out of your mind because the harder you push, the more energy and more power you are giving that thought. And so the more it's actually gonna stick around. So it's, uh, it's a bit of a uh, sort of, I don't know what you call it, maybe a mental judo. You have to kind of use its momentum against it. There are lots of different uh, methods for doing this. I'll share my favorite. My favorite meditation method for dealing with intrusive thoughts is picture that thought. Use some kind of image or symbol or whatever in your mind's eye to symbolize that thought. And then imagine a soap bubble is surrounding that, that symbol, that thought, that intrusive thought that you're having. And then once that thought is surrounded by the soap bubble, then just watch the soap bubble lazily, gently, slowly move out of your field of vision, move out of your consciousness. Just let it drift away. Don't push it out, don't force it out. Just put it in a soap bubble and let it drift away. And if it comes back or if you get another intrusive thought, don't worry about it, don't stress about it. Put it in another soap bubble, let it drift away. And just keep doing that with your intrusive thoughts as you're meditating and always try to bring your focus back to your breath and feeling and focusing on the sensation of your breath. And then one more technique uh, that I'm going to try to impart to you here. So as you're sitting comfortably, as you're breathing in slowly, as you're breathing out slowly, as you're focusing on all of the sensations of breath filling your body and leaving your body, as you're dealing with all of these intrusive thoughts and allowing them to float away. If you're still feeling some anxiety, some stress, again, that's normal. And don't try to fight it. Don't try to force yourself not to feel it. You're going to feel it. But what you can do, what, this is another technique that I really like. So as you're sitting there breathing, feel your anxiety, your stress, whatever it is, and try to give it a number on a scale of, to 10. Zero being zero stress, zero anxiety. Ten being the most stressed out, anxious, worked up you've ever been. And give your stress or your anxiety a number. And maybe right now, maybe it's a little high right now. Maybe you're up to a seven or an eight. Maybe you're even at a nine or ten. And again, don't try to completely get rid of it. Don't try to force it out. But as you're sitting, breathing, relaxing, just try to see if you can make yourself feel one number lower. So if you're feeling like an eight out of 10 right now, just breathe, relax, just try to see if you can feel it at a seven. You're still gonna be pretty stressed out. You're still gonna be kind of anxious, but maybe just a little less. Just one notch less is all you're going for, for right now. And if you can do that in the course of you know, five, six, ten minutes, whatever, um, then that's pretty productive. That's, that, and if you can do that every day, uh, I, think that'll, I think you'll feel the benefits. So that's another way. So the, the blues arts, uh, including the songs, including poetry and music and painting and other kinds of things, uh, as well as meditation techniques, these are just a couple of ways that I hope uh, might help you try to deal with the situation that we're in right now. So uh, that's... That's my word. We call this the word section here at Patchwork Worship. Uh, so that's my word section for you. Um, and now we move into a time that we call prayers of the people. 
And so usually what we do is we have people uh, lift up joys and concerns that they want to lift up in prayer. Unfortunately, we can't do that uh, exactly that way right now. Uh, so if you have uh, prayer, uh, prayers that you want to lift up, please do so at home. Uh, I'm going to say a, a prayer here for all of us. And I'm going to lift up some joys and concerns that I'm aware of. Um, and then often we will, you know, when we lift up our individual prayers, we'll say, gracious God, and everyone else responds, hear our prayer. Again, unfortunately, we can't do that call and response so easily right now. But, uh, but you can do it at home if you want. Lift up your prayer and say, gracious God. And, and hear all of us, even if you can't hear us physically, hear us spiritually all responding to your prayer. Hear our prayer. Because when you say, gracious God, I, in spirit, even though I have physically not heard that prayer, I am with you. I am connected to you. And so, in spirit, I am saying, hear our prayer. And I am responding. I know a lot of other people are, too. So as you sit there and pray your prayer, you can lift up your prayer and you can say, gracious God, and then listen for all of us to respond, hear our prayer, and listen with your inner ear. And hopefully you will hear that coming through uh, with the love and the community that we have together. So let us go to God in a spirit of prayer. God, I thank you for all of these patchwork people for the people of this community, of this family, that gather together on Sunday evenings, that volunteer in Patchwork's programs, that support Patchwork in so many different ways, that create community in the midst of this neighborhood, this community, this city, and in our world. I am deeply grateful, deeply thankful, God, for each and every one of them, for the sense of community and family that they bring when they are together. Even though we are physically separate, help us to feel that connectivity. Help us to feel that we are bound in the Spirit's tether, our minds and our spirits as one, even though our bodies are physically apart. God, I lift up this pandemic and its response for all of those who have died, we grieve. For all of those who are in mortal danger, we pray. God, we ask that you help everyone around the world understand the ways that we can love our neighbor, the ways that we can help keep our neighbors safe by social distancing, by self-quarantining, by washing hands, by doing all of these things, these concrete concrete things that we can do to show immense love for our neighbor. God, I pray especially for those who are homeless in our community and in cities and places around the world, for those who are vulnerable, for those who are on the edge of society anyway. I pray not only that they be spared from this disease, but that we as a people may see them, may see them and acknowledge their existence and start to work with more energy and more creativity and more thought and more resources on bringing them into the mainstream of society, on bringing them out of the cold and out of the loneliness God, I pray for our leaders, our leaders in the health field, our political leaders at every level. May they make wise decisions. May they listen to the best evidence. May they listen to the wisdom that is around them so that they may guide neighborhoods, cities, and nations to do the best that we can to keep people safe and healthy. God, I pray for those who may not get sick from the virus, but may still suffer from the economic consequences of our response. Help those who are low-wage earners, whose jobs may have laid them off or made their positions uncertain. For those who are just a paycheck away from 
homelessness or disaster. God, again, may we be more conscious, be more aware. May we help each other more. As we come out of the other end of this experience, may we set up new structures, new policies, so that those people are not on the edge anymore. God, I do give you thanks for this beautiful world. We give you thanks especially for yesterday, a sunny, beautiful day. But God, we are also anxious, stressed, fearful. Come into our minds and hearts. Help us feel more together. Help us feel that community of which we truly are a part. Help us feel that we are not alone. Give us peace in our inner being. Give us comfort in our minds. Give us health and wholeness in our bodies and spirits. All of this we pray in your holy name. Amen. So after our prayers of the people of joy and concern, we usually have a time of passing the bowl and taking up an offering for <clears throat> the financial offerings that help Patchwork keep going. But then during that time, we will also share gifts that we have each received uh, in the past week or so. And we tell people about them so that they can all share in the joy and the gratitude of the gift. And so again, I invite you, if, if you feel so moved and you have gifts from the past week, uh, please feel free to share those in the comments section as you wish. Um, and the financial gifts. I know that uh, Patchwork is closed, but that does not mean that we are gone. We are still present in this neighborhood. There are still people who are working to try to figure out the best way that they can help in this situation. I know that Amy and I are. We are trying to stay up uh, on the latest with our local leaders, especially around our hospitality guests and what might be happening to them. Um, our, the families and our children's program, we're staying in touch with them. Uh, so we are still maintaining that community of the folks that we serve and the folks who uh, consider themselves clients or neighbors here. Um, so even though the building is closed, the ministry and the work continues. And so please, uh, as you feel led, uh, please don't forget your financial contributions to Patchwork to help us continue this ministry. Even though we are paused at the moment, we are still present. We are still very much here in this neighborhood, in this community, still trying to, to bring uh, community to, to these people. So uh, for all of these good gifts, we give God thanks. And now we usually move to communion. We at Patchwork do communion every week and we practice an open table. Anyone who wishes to be part of our communion service, our ritual, is welcome to do so. Uh, so we ha usually have a piece of bread, and we usually have wine or juice or both, and uh, we take communion by intention when we're physically present with each other. For tonight, since we are virtually together, um, you can have a communion of the Spirit, if you wish, without any physical elements. Or if you want, I'll give you just a few moments uh, to go to your kitchen, go to your pantry, uh, get something. Get a piece of bread, get a cracker, whatever you got, and then also get a little cup. If you've got a cup and get some juice, get some milk, get some water, whatever you got. Uh, if you want some elements and we can all uh, do communion together, whether by spirit or by our own elements. Uh, so I'll give you just a few moments to go and, and grab those things and bring them back to in front of your computer or your phone or wherever you're watching this. Okay, so I hope you're back. I hope you have something to eat, something to something to drink or dunk it in. Um, so tonight uh, we just have a, a slice of bread that we was uh, left over from using for our hospitality, uh, and we have a little bit of wine in our chalice here. And just as a meditation on communion on this ritual, uh, I'll remind you that after Jesus died and was raised, uh, the disciples were very fearful. And they were shutting themselves off from the world. They were self-quarantining. 
and they were sitting huddled in a room together and they were very afraid and they weren't going out. And Jesus appeared among them and he broke the bread and they saw that it was Jesus. And he said, do not be afraid. That was the one thing he was constantly telling his disciples in his physical life and in his resurrected life throughout the New Testament. Jesus is telling his disciples, do not be afraid. I'm always with you. Even if you don't see me, I'm always with you. At this table, don't be afraid. We're not alone. Jesus is with us. We are with each other. Even when we're not physically with each other, we are with each other. So, we take the bread. And on the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took bread and he blessed it and he broke it. And he said to them, take and eat. This is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after supper, in like manner, he took the cup. And he said, take this cup, drink of it, all of you. For poured out in this cup is the new covenant in my blood. And I will not drink of the fruit of the vine with you again until we drink it new. In God's new earth, under God's new heaven. We are promised that even though there is death and there is brokenness and there is pain and there is grief, there will be new life. That we will come out of this in a new way. Our communities will be new. Our bodies will in some sense be new. Our spirits will be new. Now we will grieve the old, we will grieve what has passed, but we will revel in the newness in the resurrection, in the new life that comes out of death and brokenness, the life that always continues on. And so in that spirit, I take the bread of life, and though it is broken, it will become new. And I take the cup of the new covenant and know that there will be new relationships and new life that will always come out of death dip the bread in the cup and we eat. Now our worship service is almost concluded at this point. Uh, we do have time for a few announcements. Uh, I will say, normally during patchwork worship, we do sing. We do usually have music and we sing songs, uh, but we weren't able to do that for this, this time, this particular uh, experiment. Um, so in the future, who knows, we may be able to find ways to share music with each other. For those of you who are regular members of the patchwork worship community, um, I do encourage you, find ways to share music with each other. I know it's uh, very meaningful and important to a lot of us here at Patchwork, and so if there's any way that we can find to do that, uh, to share music with each other uh, online or even over the phone or however we can do it, uh, I think that would, be, that would be a good thing. Uh, also, as if it weren't obvious, and I think it is, uh, Patchwork is closed. The building is completely closed to the public for the time being and for uh, the foreseeable future. And we will just keep up on the latest updates and the latest um, orders and guidelines um, and, try and make decisions uh, as they come. So, and we will keep everybody updated on that as best we can. So, uh, I believe that's all the announcements we can do for right now. There, unfortunately, things happen day by day, even hour by hour. And so it's, it's hard to predict what's going to happen and what might or might not uh, be going on a few days from now. So, so uh, we'll just, like I said, we'll just promise to keep you updated as best we can, um, but uh, no other new announcements for the moment. Um, please give us some feedback on how you like this. Would you like us to do it again? Uh, how would, would you like any changes? How would you like uh, us to kind of keep up together, keep, maintain community, uh, have spiritual experiences together, even though we're physically separate? Uh, obviously, we'll take all kinds of 
suggestions and uh, creative responses. That's what Patchwork is about. So uh, I believe that's it. Um, at the end, uh, we usually say, let the children of God say, and everyone responds, amen. So I'll say it and you give, uh, let the people of God say, amen. Amen. <laughs>